This amazing building is called the Old Coral Hall and it was built in 1872. It's a Category 1 heritage building and it's located in Auckland, New Zealand. When it was decided that our Cooper stripper would be used to strip the paint off the exterior concrete, I thought it would be fun to strip a piece of the cornice for a tutorial video, and here it is. Cooper's, the stripper that gets it off every time. On a large project like this, it's important to strip a sample area first to establish a plan for going forwards. For example, what are the paints being stripped? What are the soak times? How many corbels can I strip at once? That sort of thing. Some early trials can make all the difference. Step one, strip what's on the concrete. Apply a thin coat of stripper. Use a sweeping action so the application is even. Apply additional stripper to any area that looks thirsty. It'll look like you've missed a bit, but you haven't. The top coats were acrylic and they turned into these rubbery bubbles. If you get these bubbles, you'll need to remove them as applying more stripper over them is a waste of product. When I'm removing paint, I prefer to use a tungsten blade as they hold their edge really well. For those hard to reach tight spaces, I use a chisel. When using a blade, I lightly drag it rather than trying to push off the paint. It's way more effective this way. When I can't use a blade, I use a fine bristled stainless steel brush. They're firm, but not too firm to damage the concrete. The base coats were lead and didn't bubble at all. At first glance, it looks like it's not working, but it is. The paint takes on the consistency of clay. Now, in speaking about lead, Cooper's is ideal for safely removing it, as everything we do is wet, and that means no dust to spread around. Don't strip in the direct sun, as the sun will evaporate the stripper. Having this building wrapped in plastic was a real bonus, as we were on the sunny side and we didn't have any evaporation. Make sure you're working in a well-ventilated area. Where I was, there was quite a breeze funneling past. It was like being in a spray booth. Being aware of where the stripping waste will fall is really important. The waste should not be able to get onto any of the raw brick or fall onto anyone working below or be able to make its way into the general environment. We controlled all of this with proper masking and drop sheets to hold and contain everything for proper disposal. As the bristles fill up with sticky paint, dip the brush into some stripper for a few minutes and then sharply tap the bristles against a solid surface. The paint will fall out and you're good to go. Step two, strip what's in the concrete. Once we're down to the concrete, we need to remove any paint that's soaked into the surface. This is quite straightforward. We simply apply more stripper, wait a few minutes, give it a scrub, and then flush it clean. However, in this case, we discovered some idiots from the past had stripped it using a sandblaster. The concrete was really pitted, and the corbel actually had some parts that were missing. Fortunately, the Cooper's process isn't destructive, and we didn't cause any additional damage. We simply repeated step two a few times until the paint was removed. It's important to be patient. Give the stripper a chance to dissolve the paint that's lurking in those blaster marks. When it's time, lightly scrub the surface with a cleanish brush. The tips of the stainless steel bristle will break up the softened paint from within those pock marks. If you push too hard, the bristles will bend over and not allow the tips to reach the paint. Sometimes as you're scrubbing, the surface will dry out. If it does, you'll need to add a bit more stripper to the surface while you're scrubbing. As the gun starts to build up, wipe it away with a dry cloth. Use a twisting action, as this will help lift the gunge off the surface rather than forcing it back into the concrete. Step three, flush the concrete clean. At this point, any residues of soft paint and stripper will need to be removed so that you will end up with a clean, absorbent surface. Basically, what you do is spray on the flusher while at the same time you scrub the surface with a clean brush. Then you wipe off the liquefied residue with a clean cloth. Make sure you use a twisting action to lift off the residue. If the surface is clean, you're done. However, if you discovered like we did that there was still some paint down deep, repeat steps two and three until it's clean. It's critical to do this while the residues are still wet 
If you let them dry out, you'll be using way more flusher and elbow grease than you should. And you'll probably end up leaving residues behind that can cause problems with the new paint. And now we're done. And you only have a few more to go. Thanks for watching. Are you looking for a stripper? A stripper that really gets it off? Cooper's the stripper that gets it off every time.